I took a carry at Nawadi in, uh, in New Zealand. And looking at the conservation concept, we're going to start with that, that one of the ideas is that attachment to place and specific aspects of nature encourages actions that in turn care for the area in question. And then the role of sanctity and environmental conservation is Wow, I got upset. Okay. Uh, government forest managers need to include local people in conservation discussions. So using these and then with the more specific aspect of attachment to a specific tree can especially play an active role in conservation. So using these ideas, we're going to look at a specific example of the cowrie tree in, uh, in New Zealand. <laughs> yeah, so there's my study site in New Zealand that I actually am a geographer. Yes, I'm sorry. I didn't make that map. Um, we're going to be looking at the North Island and the natural distribution of the calories actually in the northern part of the North Island. So the methods, I was using semi-directed interviews. Uh, you can see five married to New Zealand professors of, of European descent, not married descent, and then other residents. So clearly this is a very small um, a study group, however, this data does reflect trends that can be further examined with larger sets of informants. As you see, there's a very specific trend that we'll see. And also, all of these informants, so it was um, non-random, they all either specifically were connected to ethnobotany and or the capture. So, looking at the results, just starting with the material uses of the tree, um, the historical uses, the wood itself, was very popular, has a very straight trunk, branchless at the bottom of the tree um, when it's an adult, and so it's used for ships, for ships masts, furniture, buildings. Um, this, there, so there was extensive logging of the cowrie trees. It's a very popular tree, um, became a huge export for New Zealand. But there was also another part of it, and it's the, what they call the gum, or the resin. And um, this was connect, collected for, for varnish and linoleum. This became a particularly lucrative export. And so people would be digging for these buried lumps of gum in what they would call the gum fields. And often the, the resin would come out through the bark, and then it would fall, dirt would cover it, and, and then they would dig them up and find them. They also started later to actually bleed the trees on purpose in order to precipitate this the spawning of the, the resin. So they were they were exporting them mostly to London and America in the 1840s. Seventy percent of varnish was, varnish was made from this this cowrie tree. Now, sort of as an as an interesting thing, this fostered some ethnic mixing because initially the Maori the Maori were the ones who were the gum diggers. They were there, but they were making so much money. This actually brought in people from Europe, and you had particularly people coming in from Croatia. They were working in the gum fields. So then you had some mixing, and they were marrying Maori. They were learning how to speak Maori. Then you had these biracial families. You had all this ethnic stuff going on, and, and woo-ha, everyone gets along, and then bam, it's over. It's 1930s, 30s, it's synthetic varnish that no longer were needing the gum. So that whole process ended, and a lot of that mixing also shifted. So today, if you're actually using the physical calorie, um, they're finding buried ones that for, for 50,000 years in swamps, so they're very well preserved. They bring it up, and people are making furniture and just the wood looking much more natural. There's a whole clock industry of calorie wood clocks. But then looking at the, the cultural uses, and, and again, this is we're getting to the connection that people have with the tree and how that could lead to conservation. Um, you have, when you have stands of forest, they will call them the cowrie forest. E, just if cowrie are one of the trees that are present, this does not mean that they're even the dominant tree, but because the cowrie is so important, it's considered a cowrie forest. And the Zealand Forest Service even specifically named a cowrie management unit just to implement policies that would protect the tree. In 1972, um, they made a government decree that it was illegal to fell any any of the calorie. So about 4% are currently standing and protected. So again, this is going to be a government decree on the calorie. So we're going to look at what people themselves are feeling about the calorie, which is often a more effective way to do conservation. So 
So one of the most famous examples, this, this one is not my picture, is um, the, I'm going to say this completely incorrectly, Tana Mahuta, the, the Lord of the Forest. So this is one individual, a big, big tree in the Northland, and incredibly old, incredibly tall, incredibly big. And um, this is a tourist destination. So this will be on, uh, the big buses will come, it's on, it's part of the, the tour of New Zealand, you'll see this tree. So we're seeing just the use of seeing that is bringing people. Um, you have the local people who are looking at it for, for their own cultural connection. You have tourists, international tourists coming to see this tree. So already with this use, we're having an economic uh, relevance to it. And that in itself becomes an incentive not just to protect the tree, but to protect the ecosystem in which that tree is growing. And, and we're going to concentrate more on that. There are less well-known smaller, smaller trees in parks. Um, but these are also protected, even if you're not the big one on the tourist map. So there's a lot of ecological awareness of the tree, just for regular, everyday people, and particularly with the cowrie dieback. That is one of the big issues. Um, and again, you're, you're concerned about the cowrie, but as we know, many of these cowrie forests have all of these other species in them, so you're also going to be taking care of all the species that surround this one specific one. So when you go into the, to the area, there's this concentration on awareness, and awareness and protection. So you have your footwear cleaning station. So before you would go into the area, you have your little station that's set up for you. And with this, you're already getting that you're going to trust that people are supporting this and that they will comply because they are caring about the tree. Nobody's monitoring this. It's just understood this is what you should do. So, Looking at this cultural connection at a very, very local level, I'm just going to highlight a few examples of the people with whom I was working there. Um, so, so looking at the Maori, I was talking to him about the Kauri, this is a really important tree, but what? He said, you know what? I, I can't really talk to you about it. I want you to feel the explanation. Okay. <laughs> so he's like, we got in the car, and we went to the uh, Wadikari Range, so in Auckland, this is pretty close to the city, and uh, and he drives me there, and we get out, and suddenly we, we wash our feet, and, and we enter the forest, and then it turns into this completely different way of walking. Before, when I mean, he was just walking along, we're talking, we get to the forest, and it's this suddenly this, and everything is quiet, and nothing is happening, and I'm trying to be respectful, and he's making no noise, and I'm behind him going, and he's looking back. <laughs> <laughs> trying so hard to be respectful, and um, then we get to to the coward tree. This is to where he was leading me, and uh, he starts to sprinkle water on the base of the tree, and he takes some rice and he sprinkles that, and I'm, I'm watching, and um, and then he puts his forehead against the tree, and he looks to me and goes, so, "Okay, so I put my forehead against the tree." But I actually had some idea what was going on now. So when I first got to New Zealand, we were greeted by two Maori, and they walked up, a man comes up, and he puts his forehead against mine, and he looks at me, and I, you know, I'd done the whole, like, hey, oh, yeah, just get, well. And we're doing this, and he's looking at me, and I'm looking at him, and I'm thinking, what on earth is going on? This is so awkward. I'm like, uh-huh, uh-huh. And then he pulls away, and he kind of smiles, and I smile, and I'm like, yeah. I'm like, what just happened? <laughs> and I learned that it was actually, it was, Hongi, the, the breath of life exchange, was a way that he was, was greeting me. So I had learned that by the time we got to the tree, and that is what this individual was doing with the tree, and he wanted me to do that. So I had my forehead against the tree, and then he says, ask the tree. And I'm like, what? <laughs> ask the tree. And I thought, oh, yeah, all right. So, so never mind what I asked the tree, but the point was, with him, as he said to me, is that we work the trees, so we have to protect these trees. And Again, there's this conservation going connection with this cultural, and he claimed his feet before we went in, so with the ecological. And, and you know, he's, he's an urban guy. I mean, we, we drove there, he is very connected to the calories, he's also very connected to his, his uh, SUV, which you see we drove in. And when he did the, the rice came out of a little baggie, the water that he put on the tree came out of a old Coke bottle. So, again, it's not the, oh, out there, other oh, there, juja. this is a guy, driving me from the city. And there's another uh, another Maori example. 
This is a woman she's working with revitalizing the Maori culture. She's working specifically with the, the youth. And um, she, she does a lot of ethnobotany, so we're doing general ethnobotany. And we're, we're walking through, and she's showing me plants, and she's talking about them. Um, this is out on one of the islands. And it's all in our voice. She's talking, and then we, we go, and then we hit the, uh, the cowrie grove. And suddenly, she just starts to sing. And that's how she was communicating with the trees and with me about what was, was happening. And then also at a more government level, you can see that she's on a wooden platform. We were walking on dirt trails throughout the whole area, but under the cowrie grove, that's where a wooden platform was. That's where the park service put this structure granting importance to this area of the park. And then um, this is in Christchurch, so not on the South Island. And um, this is a New Zealander, he's of European heritage, although he has a little, little bit of Maori. But he's, um, he's into general ethnobotany, he's got his little booklet, we're walking around um, his park, but he also has a special reverence for, for the Kauri. So we're in this urban park, and um, this is a very European-focused park. You know, in memory of the Scottish pioneers of Canterbury, it's called Dean's Bush, I mean, this is all about the Scots, this is about European colonization coming to New Zealand. And in this park, they also have calories. Um, and also now we're looking at a much more urban area where calories is being treated a certain way. And also again, like I said before, in the north part of the North Island, these have clearly been brought here where the South Island were out of the way. They wanted them to be in this park. So he's there with his wife, and, and we're going along again these trails. Things are... Um, some are paved, but there's nothing for seating. And then you get to the calorie grove, and there's benches, and there's wood. And Again, the park itself has made this the focus of their park, where the calorie are. And um, here is where he gave me a green stone, a piece of jade in, in New Zealand that, that is very meaningful. I'm going to go into my questions for just a little bit. If I don't have any, I hope I only have three minutes and I'll be good. So, um, and he said it had to be given under the calorie trees. So that moment, that special moment of giving this piece of jade, he said, well, that had to be under the calorie. So, I just looking at the conclusion, you have the majority of the population is urban, and as people there for many New Zealanders, the presence of massive old trees and the knowledge that there are primeval forests remains important to their cultural identity. And the theory of making a place ordinarily sacred can locate people within the natural world and as active players in successful conservation. So again, these ideas, we see this concept here. Um, in reality, we have this conservation of the tree and the ecosystem having to do with the cultural connection with the specific species. Thank you.